Hi guys, this is Kev. Um, I just wanted to show a little bit about what's sometimes required to take off the uh, the brim and or supports from some pieces and the tools that I use to do that. Uh, they're standard hobby tools, same thing you'd use with doing a, a sprue of plastic miniatures. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's just a, a, a nippers that looks like a little scissors. There is another type of nippers, the difference here being that it's flat on one side. So if you're cu cutting tight up against something, it works kind of nice. And then a standard little hobby knife that's just a, uh, sharp. And I suppose it should be said, as with any tool that uh, uh, is sharp, please be careful. These are some pillars. As you can see, what I do to separate them from the brim, uh, the brim is necessary to, to print on a 3D printer most of the time to hold it to the floor. Otherwise, the pieces have a tendency to move around and they'll fail. I, this is my preferred weapon of choice. And you just take it and cut along the bottom. And I'm not going to go real fast here because I want it to show on camera. But normally, I would be going at a higher speed. And... This is pretty much all that's required. You can also do it by hand for some pieces. Sometimes it comes off perfectly clean. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of trim. You can also use the knife and the pieces are trimmable as with most plastics to cut off trim or however you'd like to mold the piece. As with any knife, please cut away from yourself. But that is pretty much how you would cut off the brim. This is a piece that has supports. Uh, someone requested a uh, chest set. So this is my first print of one. And you can see it's got, the table has four legs on the bottom. The brim is extraneous as is the plus shape support. So for the most part, what I do in this case as I cut the brim, peel it off, and because the brim is just a single layer of plastic, it's very thin and it's not printed tight together, uh, it comes off real easy. And then I just take, and I'm looking at the bottom, and just cutting at a few positions. These supports are extremely thin, rather weak material. They're only printed as a support. Uh, to help with the printing process to make sure that uh, anything that overhangs uh, has extra support on it. Some of these things you can pry by hand. Uh, I forgot to grab a needle nose pliers. That would be a, another tool I use fairly often. But it, you can see how the, the bottom of the brim, I can just peel it right off. It's, it's not like I said, it's not a strong material and it's not meant to be. It's meant to come off of the printed object. So, and this gets faster and faster as a person gets familiar with it, just like with any plastic sprue. Um, familiarity is kind of key with uh, the hobby, I guess, in general. You can see that this piece kind of wrapped the support around it. The support's automatically generated, so I don't have full control over exactly where the supports show up. But you could use needle nose players, you could use the scissors to do this part. I'm using my fingers here primarily to show you that you know you don't even need the tool for a lot of it. It just comes off. And this is one of the more complex pieces. Uh, most pieces I don't print with this type of support that has the uh, the supports going all the way up the whole bottom. The only reason I did on this first print was to uh, see A, how it printed, and B, um, you've got the table overhanging, and it does a better job if it's there. Some people may or may not care about the edges due to the brim that printed on the bottom. It's easy enough to trim either with the scissors, or the nippers, I should say, or with the hobby knife. Either way works. And you've got a finished table that can be painted. It does not necessarily need to be primed. 
Uh, this is a type of plastic. It's real similar to a, a Lego type material. Um, it's not quite as strong as Legos, but I'm going to move it up real close just so you can kind of see. The bottoms of objects are usually a little bit rougher due to the printing process. Um, fortunately, the bottoms are always out of sight. And you can see some of the detail of this new table. Um, as an example, here's one where the brim printed around the bottom of the cage. Again, a lot of some brims come off perfectly clean with no tools whatsoever. Other brims need that little bit of work. When I'm doing my own pieces, for the most part, I will just get a box to sit below me in front of my recliner, put the TV on, and trim a bunch of parts. And the part's ready to be printed, or not printed, uh, painted, and you are ready to go. You could sand it if you really wanted to get rid of that edge. Uh, honestly, once you paint it, it's going to go away. Uh, again, the brims can, for the most part, come off with fingernails and or the sharp knife. Here's an example. It came off perfect just with my fingernail. So it's the brims tend to come off pretty darn easy. The supports are the points that take a little bit more work like you saw with that piece. Um, partially because uh, I, I wouldn't remove them because for shipping purposes they're going to ship a lot more reliably uh, I don't want to have anything damaged on the way to you guys uh, but also it uh, uh, not a lot of parts have brim or have supports sticking up on them none of these do uh, there's probably I don't know five or ten items in the whole Kickstarter that actually have uh, supports that remain on the items. There's not very many. And and that's it. And I mean, you can see the, the tiny pieces on here. So I um, would be afraid to cast this in the white resin in a mold because resin has a difficult time getting down into these itty bitty, uh, all the tiny parts. And you'd have to have a two part mold and hope that it gets down in there. You probably have to pressure cast it, uh, put it in, into a uh, it's a container that you uh, you pressure bake it. Uh, my pieces typically are not done that way. Uh, so, so that's hope that helps. Again, standard nippers. This happens to be a Zuron Z U R O N brand, and this tool happens to be about I don't know thirteen or fifteen dollars I think. Uh, similar for this one, this is, uh, uh, the, they don't have a brand on them. Uh, this I purchased at a, a typical hobby store. This is a cheap from a $5 set that I got at, um, heck, you can, I think at these at a dollar store, but hobby stores have them, uh, big box retail stores online, you know, they're all over the place. All that's required is that it's got a sharp edge, but again, please be careful with uh, anything sharp. Thanks. Have a great day.